Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and this is Keyflower, a worker placement village building auction game for two to six players. Let me show you how to play. You and your friends play settlers in the new world who bid for tiles each season of the year to build out their growing little villages. You start the game with eight random key pulls drawn from a bag in three different colors, red, yellow, and blue. Side note, my plus people equals meeple, keyflower plus meeple equals keeple, keeple plus herpetologist equals kerpetologypolist, but let's not go crazy. Anyway, these keeples are kept behind a privacy screen that looks like an adorable little house. The game is played in four seasons, from spring to winter. Each season, a fresh selection of hexagonal tiles goes up for auction. By outbidding your opponents using your keeples, you add the tiles you win to your own village. The tiles themselves give you tools and resources, and sometimes more keeples, when you activate them by placing your keeples on them. You can upgrade your tiles to make them more valuable. At the end of each season, the top bidders win their choice of ships coming over from the old world with fresh settlers and tools on them. When the winter auction ends, players tally up their points to see who's won. Now, that overview makes Keyflower look super boring and average in a sea of board games about dull European settlers. But what makes Keyflower really interesting is in the fine print. Let's dive in a little deeper and I'll show you what I mean. The first interesting thing about Keyflower is how auctions work. On your turn, you can take any number of keeples of the same color from behind your screen and use them to bid on a tile. Your keeples go on the tile edge closest to you, so the player sitting here bids along this edge, and this player sitting here bids along this or this edge, and so on. When you bid on a tile, you lock the tile to that color. Any future bid has to have more keeples in it, and they have to be that same color. So you can bid one yellow keeple. Your friend Rakesh has to bid two or more yellow keeples if he wants that tile. If you really want the tile, maybe you start out by bidding two or three yellow keeples. Maybe Rakesh is insane and throws down five yellow keeples, I don't know. Rakesh makes bad life decisions. It's a problem. On your turn, you can bolster your bid by adding keeples. But I mean, come on. If you're outbid anywhere, you can pick up those outbid keeples from one or more auction tiles and assign them somewhere else. You can't split them up. If you pick up a group of three, they have to stay in a group of three. You can grow the group using keeples from behind your screen, but you can't put out big keeples back behind your screen. They have to go out in the big wide world somewhere. Oh, here comes the rules gremlin to warn us about something tricky. The rule book says that outbid keeples can be used in a bag exchange. You might think this means that you can take your outbid keeples and put them in the bag and draw new ones to replace them. I mean, that's how I played a couple of games of Keyflower. And a quick internet search shows that I'm not alone. We'll find out what the rule book means by bag exchange a little later. But for now, just know that it doesn't mean you can swap out your outbid keeples in the bag for fresh ones. At the end of the season, any keeples used in a winning bid get tossed back in the bag. So if you burn a bunch of keeples winning tiles, you might find yourself key impoverished come next season. Tiles can also be activated if you put one or more keeples on them. Check out the big rectangle at the top of the tile to see what it does. Most tiles give you some kind of resource, wood, stone, iron, or gold, or one of three different skill tiles, anvils, pickaxes, and saws. Just like bidding, if you activate a naked tile with a keeple, you lock the tile to that color. This tile can be activated again, but someone would have to place at least two red keeples on it since it's now locked red. The tile gets color locked regardless of whether keeples were used to bid on it or activate it. You can't use blue keeples to activate a tile that was locked yellow in a bid. And likewise, you can't use blue keeples to bid on a tile that was activated with red ones. There's no limit to the number of keeples that can be bid on a tile, Rakesh, but the most keeples the inside of a tile can hold is six. So after three activations, this tile is done. If you start off by placing two keeples on this tile, it can only be activated one more time with three keeples. 
Since four more keepers would take it past the limit of six, this tile can no longer be activated this season. If you want to block a tile so that no one else can activate it, throw three keepers on it. Four keepers would tip the scale past six, so this tile is now off limits. Keepers that are outbid on auction tiles can be scooped up and used to activate other tiles, obeying the color and number rules. And that even includes the tiles they were outbid on. At the end of each season, the winning bidders return their successfully bid keepers to the bag and take their hard-won tiles, including any keepers that may be on those tiles. And then, they get to build out their villages. The tiles fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, just match up the roads and grass and water along their edges. You can rotate a tile any way you like to make it fit properly. Later, if you get a boat, you can align it by water or by grass. Once you decide on a location for your tiles, you can't move them around for the rest of the game. On your turn, you either take one or more keepers of a single color and place them on a tile to activate it, around a tile to bid on it, or you pass. If you pass and the round comes back to you, you can still jump back in and play if you want to. But it's a bit risky to pass, hoping you'll get to play again later, because if every player passes in succession, the season is over. Now check this out. Here's one of the most intriguing aspects of Keyflower. Come summer, interesting new tiles are dealt out to the auction. You can place your keepers around them to bid on them, like we've seen earlier. You can place your keepers on top of them to get stuff. You can place your keepers on the tiles on your own village to get stuff. You can place your keepers on other people's tiles in their villages to get stuff. And that means that other players can place their keepers on tiles in your village to get stuff. Here's why it all matters. When a season ends, tiles that nobody bid on leave the game forever. If those tiles have any keepers on them, the keepers go back in the bag. Keepers that were outbid come back to the losing players. The keepers that win tiles at auction go back in the bag at the end of the season. Any keepers sitting on the tiles that you win at auction go to you. And you get to use those keepers next season. Any keepers in your village, whether they were placed there by you or by the other players, also go behind your screen for the next season. And by that token, any keepers that you've placed in your opponent's villages are theirs to keep. So that's where a lot of the meaty strategy of Keyflower comes in. Do you place your keepers on auction tiles to get stuff, knowing full well that you might lose those keepers to whoever wins the tile in a bid? Do you use your keepers to win tiles, knowing full well that you'll lose them to the bag, but, but that's the only tile that gives wood in the game. So if you win the tile and add it to your village, that means other people will play their keepers on it to get wood, meaning that they'll be feeding you keepers for the rest of the game. So maybe it's worth impoverishing your keepers supply in spring as an investment for later. There's also the consideration that color is power. If you have the biggest wad of blue keepers out of anyone else at the table, you know you can successfully win any bid. Or hog a tile's benefit all to yourself with a three keeple power play. That's why it's so important that which keepers you have and in which quantities is kept secret behind your screen. Part of the challenge of the game is remembering which colored keepers and in which quantities your opponents have. In any worker placement game, going first is really important. Here's how you pull that off in Keyflower. These special turn order tiles can be bid on. When the season is over, whoever successfully bid on turn order tile number one gets first pick of the boats and takes all of the keepers and skill tiles on one of them. Then, whoever successfully bid on turn order tile number two gets second pick of a boat, and so on. If you win bids on two turn order tiles, you still only get the resources on one boat. Every player gets reinforcements from a boat at the end of the season. These turn order tiles just decide who gets preference. Whoever wins the bid on this tile gets the purple first player token and goes first next round. Here are some curb cases. Let's say that in a bizarre twist, the only turn order tile to be won was number two. That winning player gets to pick a boat first. 
Then, the existing starting player gets next pick, then everyone else clockwise from the start player gets to pick. Since nobody won the starting player token, it then gets passed on clockwise for the next season. Let's say turn order tiles 1 and 3 are successfully bid on. The winner of this tile gets first pick, and then the newly crowned starting player gets to pick. And then everyone else going clockwise from the new starting player gets to pick. The turn order tiles and the boat tiles stay on the table. Neither of them come home with you. Flip the boats as needed to show the icon for the next season. The boats get refilled with keepals and skill tiles for the end of the next round. We know that tiles provide resources, but we haven't seen what those resources do. Check it out! When you activate a tile in your village, the resources you get end up on that tile. When you activate a tile from outside your village, the resources end up on your home tile. This matters. Here's why. Most tiles in your village can be upgraded to their flip side. When you flip a tile, it needs to be the same orientation as it was before. The opposite side of a tile supplies better stuff, or in some cases, points towards winning the game. It costs resources to upgrade a tile. The upgrade cost is inside this arrow. This one costs one iron, one stone, and one wood, while this one costs one saw. The smaller rectangle at the bottom of a tile gives you a preview of what the tile does when you upgrade it. In order to upgrade a tile, you have to activate another tile with this upgrade icon on it. Notice that it looks like an upside down version of the upgrade arrow. The tile you activate to receive upgrade powers can be anywhere. In your village, in someone else's village, or in the auction area. Tiles with upgrade powers follow the same activation rules as any other tile. Maximum 6 keeples per tile, locked to a certain color. So you activate one of these tiles, and then declare the tile you want to flip over. The resources you spend to upgrade a tile have to be sitting on that tile when you upgrade it. That's not the case for the square skill tokens. They go behind your screen whenever you collect them, and they don't need to be sitting on tiles in order to pay for an upgrade, but the resource barrels do. So how do you move resources around? Well, that's where carriages come in. In addition to letting you upgrade a tile, this tile lets you move any one of your resource barrels along a road one tile away. This one gives you two movement points, which you can split up. Move one of your resources by road two tiles away, or move two resources by road one tile away. These are not 4x4 all-wheel drive off-road carriages, so you can't transport goods across fields or rivers. If you manage to get all of the resources you need onto the tile you want to upgrade, you play a keeple on a tile with an upgrade action, cash in those resources, and flip the tile. Any keeples or unused resources that may have been sitting on the tile stay on the tile. You can activate one of these tiles and use only the move powers or only the upgrade powers if you want to, and you don't necessarily have to upgrade the tile that you just moved resources to. Some beefier tiles that may show up later in the game have better carriages with more movement points or more upgrade powers that allow you to flip multiple tiles in a single turn. One strategically interesting thing to keep in mind is this. When you play one or more keeples to upgrade a tile, your turn is now over. That newly upgraded tile with its sweeter stuff is now available to all of your opponents to play their keeples on. Unless, of course, you upgraded it when it was already crammed full of keeples for this season, which is your best plan of attack, but you can't always rely on it. Here are a few other keyflower rules worth mentioning. Some tiles help you get special green keeples. Activate the tile, discard a keeple of the color depicted, and take a green keeple from the supply. Green keeples are amazing to have. Why? Well, because if you're the only player in the game with a green keeple, the moment you use that keeple to bid on or activate a tile, you've locked it green. It's all yours. Guaranteed, because nobody else has green keeples to top you. There are no green keeples in the bag that come from their own special supply. But know this any green keeples that you use to win tiles at auction, or any green keeples that you use to activate tiles in the auction that nobody wins, go back into the bag. 
They could be pulled randomly by other players, or they could show up on the boats in a future season. And of course, any green keeples that you use to activate tiles in your opponent's villages get kept by those opponents for the next season. And here's another really important thing about green keeples. They're not wild. They're green. Gold, on the other hand, is wild. It can be substituted for any other resource. Not any square skill tile, but any wooden resource barrel. At the end of the game, each barrel of gold is worth one point. Symbologically speaking, question mark means draw randomly, a white symbol means you choose, and an equal sign means something of the same color or type. In summer, you can bid on special boats. They get dealt to the table, random side up. They can't be upgraded or activated with keeples, but once they're in your village, they give you powers that last the rest of the game. The rule book tells you what all of these boats do in detail. I'm not going to go over every one. What am I, some sort of board game teacher? Now back to this whole bag exchange thing. Here's what the rule book means. You activate a tile like this with one, two, or three keeples of a certain color, and then you can discard a separate keeple of any color and draw two new ones at random from the bag. The color you discard doesn't have to be the color that you use to activate the tile. If the bag doesn't have enough keeples in it for you to draw, tough nuts, then you toss your discarded keeple into the bag. So the keeples that you use to activate the tile can come from behind your screen, or they can be one or more outbid keeples. If you activate the tile with keeples from behind your screen, you can discard an outbid keeple for the exchange. If two of your keeples are outbid and you want to discard them, you have to discard them both, even though the tile only requires you to discard one because you can't split up outbid keeples. That means you can't take two outbid keeples and use one to activate the tile and the other to discard, because that would still mean you're splitting up outbid keeples on your turn. Wherever outbid keeples go, they go together. Winter works slightly differently than the other seasons. Off the top of the game, you're dealt three random winter tiles. When winter arrives, you have to choose one or more of these tiles to appear at auction for everyone to bid on. The winter tiles can't be activated by playing a keeple on them, but they have certain scoring conditions for the end of the game, like earn points for collecting tools or earn double points for collecting gold. The idea is you see these at the beginning of the game, and then you strategize throughout the game so that when these tiles come available, you're in a perfect position to make good on these scoring conditions. But you have to pick at least one of these tiles to go out into the general auction where your opponents can also bid on them. Chuck out the ones you don't pick, reveal your chosen winter tiles from a closed fist, and shuffle them into a stack with everyone else's winter tiles before dealing them out to maintain a little strategic mystery. In winter, no keepals or tools end up on the boats, but at the end of the season, the turn order tiles and boats actually do come home with you. You can claim as many turn order tiles as you successfully bid on. They also give you preference to take home one of the boats, which have special scoring bonuses on them. You only get to take one of the boats, mind, even if you win more than one turn order tile. At the end of the game, each player gets a boat. The turn order tiles just decide preference as they did in previous seasons. When you place them in your village, the turn order tiles score you one point for every tile that borders them. So this one is touching three tiles, that's three points. This clever planner will score five points from this one. The resources, keeples, and tools you spend on points at the end of the game can be used only once. So if you use these buckets of wood to get points from this tile, they're done. You can't use them again to get points from this tile. Remember that gold is wild and can stand in for any resource. And if you don't use it for tile points, each barrel of gold is worth one point on its own. The player who wins the purple starting keeple can use it just once as anything, any single good skill tile or keeple of any color for scoring purposes. Tiles that have this hex symbol only score if the resources are physically on the tile. If you have the purple keeple, you can place it on one of these tiles. Any place you see a yellow circle is just straight up points. 
The key Thedral and other tiles that kind of look like it from earlier in the game are straight up worth the points depicted on the tile once only. But all the other Witcher tiles can be juiced multiple times for their points. So this one gives you three points for every five workers. If you've got ten workers, you can use them to get six points. The keeples played on your own village are available to use in scoring at the end of the game. The Kerpetologipolis can research five kirtles to win one government crant. To set up the game, sort the tiles into their four seasons according to the little icons. Then deal out some winter tiles to each player. This is a bit of a bummer for new players because they have to devise a strategy right off the top of the game using iconography they don't understand in a game they've never even played. In a two, three, or four player game, deal out three winter tiles each. In a five or six player game, deal out two winter tiles. The number of tiles that go out for auction in each season is also player dependent. It's player count plus four. The unused tiles go back in the box. The number of boats should equal the number of players, and there is always one less turn order tile than the player count, except in a six player game. Just look for the helpful symbols on the tiles to help you figure out which ones to use. Each player gets a screen and eight keeples pulled randomly from the bag. Deal out one home tile to each player at random. The player with the lowest numbered home tile gets the purple starting player token. Resource barrels and green keeples form a supply and skill tiles all go face down. Load up the boats with their tools and keeples and then deal the spring tiles out to the middle of the table for your first auction. What seems at first like another boring game about settlers is actually a really interesting multiplayer puzzle, full of fascinating decisions and desperate bids to squeeze just one more point out of your tiles. In my opinion, Keyflower is worth shelling out for, but I'm no Kerpetologipolist. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe, and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.